the last part of this uh, discussion about uh, using parametric EQs. Now we'll just go back to this example here of what we had before where uh, we would take your frequencies, cut off the, the amount that you want. And I went into a little bit about, you know, peaking out um, some frequencies on what y you would think would sound the best. But sometimes you might want to just stay at where you're at, um, at this zero decibel level, and everything sounds cool, except you might have a, a few frequencies that you might have some um, dislikes for. So what you would do with this is you would search out this uh, horrible frequency that you may hear and may occur say here for example and uh, take the cue bring it down to a very narrow band here and uh, once you've got that that frequency pinpointed exactly where it is just take your gain dial and dip it down dip it down about about three decibels like I'm doing an extreme example of what's happening here right now with um, this graphic representation. But just dip it down about three decibels and that should get rid of any kind of weird kind of hiss thing that was happening or a, you know kind of sound that was happening in your guitar or drums or whatever it is that you're that you're trying to EQ at the time so keep that in mind that dipping down to get rid of unwanted frequencies is a good this is a good way to do it um, with the parametric EQ uh, with that said, um, let's go back to my examples before about using, uh, you know, uh, uh, favorable frequencies. In my last video, I showed you I was bringing them up fairly high here, like like you would see it, it's scooped up fairly high at about the eight decibel mark. It, you know, you can do that. You can go down a little further to about the three decibel mark and uh, and bring the whole thing back down like I showed you in the last video. And that way you're not cutting out too much, but, you know, you're allowing for this dip to happen. And also there's another way of doing this with... Um, with guitar sharing frequencies you may have one guitar which is dipped up this way with uh, with this this area being dipped upwards where on your second guitar you might have this area being dipped upwards so on your first guitar you might you might dip out some areas while the other one dips back up to compensate kind of the kind of reverse uh, you know the wave that they're emulating here so three and two for example three would be dipped down two would be dipped up and then your other guitar would have three up while the two is back down so they would both be kind of sharing the the same sort of frequencies but one is taking up this band the other one's taking up the other band so uh, that way you can you can share some some space between the two like say two guitars for example but your best bet is to just go ahead and give them both uh, a uh, left and right panning so uh, you know slightly to one side or the other uh, don't hard pan them unless you really want to but you know when you're sharing a uh, bandwidth like that just just do like a um, just a 30 percent to the left or 30% to the right for the other one and uh, that works out fine it's not too far pan you know but you can you can feel the separation and play around with that for for a while and 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 try different things like that after you've got everything separated all your <clears throat> all your uh, tracks 
completed this way and everything sounds good and separated you might um, you, you might want to explore some things that delve into the mastering aspect where where I would um, you know if I'm not mastering you want to collectively throw all the uh, all the tracks that you're using right now this is a totally new setup with n nothing in any of any of these tracks here they're all empty and uh, I'm just using this for an example where you would want to go ahead and throw everything into you know a channel that's just got a left and right and and it from there go ahead and EQ the entire body of the entire tracks uh, funneled together into this one master track so <clears throat> for example uh, let's um, let's not get into this side of it let's go back to the mix here I'm just gonna go through uh, what the mastering or well, this side of the mastering in this DAW um, gives you a console kind of like this where um, you EQ the entire body of of every, all the all the tracks coming into just a left and right channel and you start tweaking away at the at the sound you know to get it to be a uh, a, a relatively good sounding uh, piece of work all together you know by working with a you know an EQ multiband EQ and uh, you know shaping the sound to where it's pleasant to the media that you're um, working on now this may take some trial and error because you might be just uploading to YouTube or you might be uh, working on something that uh, goes in your car and you want to kind of get it to the point where you can listen to it in your car and not necessarily YouTube so um, you know different things different setups with the EQ sound differently everywhere so you have to get a, a happy medium worked out and uh, and you know sometimes you know dip in the mids will work sometimes they won't it depends on your piece of music and everything uh, compressor you can mess around with that compressors limiters and that all that stuff um, it's all interesting things that you can learn later on but for right now if you're just the the typical home recording guy that that just wants to separate his his you know his instruments and get it to sound where it's not gonna hurt somebody's ears when they're listening to it uh, I mean this approach is is really kind of fast and quick once once you got your whole bevy of tracks you know EQ'd with the one EQ and uh, sounding really good. Go ahead and and uh, and save that and and run it off as a as a MP3 and and do a test. See what it sounds like. If it sounds you know a little, if it sounds too bassy, then go back into your uh, mix again and uh, go back to this mastering panel and. Uh, you know, reduce the bass if that's what was what was sounding too bassy, or or you know, increase the mids if you're not getting enough presence um, in your guitars or the vocals. Start adjusting things and and then run off another MP3 and test that out in you know in your vehicle or on on a uh, private YouTube um, upload just to test it out each time because you know compression on YouTube really does different things to your music and uh, even just you know making an mp3 does um, strange compression things to your music at times too so keep that in mind as well so hopefully this gives you some uh, you know good insight on starting out in mixing your music I mean it's not a it's not an entirely 
professional, you know, course on the thing or anything like that. It's just to get get you started onto your adventure of, of mixing and then eventually learning how to master your uh, your tracks. So uh, hopefully that helps. Thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and, and uh, we'll go from there. All right.